And let's say we get things underway with a WBA World Light Heavyweight title fight. This one in the Middle East, this one in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. That's where they're holding it uh, with Russian Dmitry Bivol, the unbeaten champion. When last we saw him, Dan Rayfield, he knocked off some guy named Canelo Alvarez in May. So this is his next fight since then, a title defense at 175 against a Mexican in Gilberto Zerdo Ramirez, who's a former world champion himself and uh, obviously has shown some knockout power since moving up to light heavyweight. We see the lines. We see the over under at 12 and a half. Dan, what do we think about what is a very intriguing light heavyweight showdown coming Saturday? Well, I think, and I've said this before, of the fights uh, that were on the calendar for the fourth quarter of this year, this was probably my favorite fight on the group of fights, maybe other than uh, the Chocolatito uh, Gonzalez uh, Juan Francisco Estrada trilogy fight. But this is a high class, A plus level fight. Um, this is, if you put, uh, if you take a look at the light heavyweight division, you have Arthur Beterbiev as the three belt undefeated champion, has won all of his fights by knockouts. Put him to the side for a second. These are the next best two guys in the weight class. And there are some that may argue that Bivol should be ranked number one. Uh, be that as it may, these are two of the best three fighters in the division. Uh, Zerto Ramirez is the mandatory challenger, so Bivol had no choice but to fight him or lose that belt. But he earned that position. A lot of times in boxing, and you know this, TJ, guys ascend to a mandatory position. There may not be uh, the best challenger out there. There's politics involved, that sort of thing. But in case, in the case of uh, Zerto Ramirez, he's earned this shot. As you mentioned, former champion in the super middleweight division. He's now been on a, a streak of knockouts since he's moved up to light heavyweight. And he's not just knocking out complete nobodies. He's knocked out some solid opponents. As he's been trying to get this fight, he begged for this fight. He tried to do everything in their power to not fight this fight on the B-Bowl side. They looked to make other fights, but the combination of the pressure applied by Team Ramirez and his promoter, uh, Oscar De La Hoya from Golden Boy, and, and with the help from the WBA, which is the sanctioning body that is overseeing the fight, uh, they ordered the fight, and they really uh, had no choice. People had to take this fight, and it was sort of... You know, we would understand if Canelo Alvarez had opted to seek the rematch against him. That would be a bigger fight, of course, and I don't think there would be too much of an issue. But once Canelo elected to not take that rematch immediately, it became very clear that uh, Zerto should be the next in line. And uh, this fight is on. It's it's a great matchup. Look, these guys are 64-0 and 0 combined. Mm. And they're 64-0 and 0 combined. And the, between the two of them, they have beaten a lot of good fighters. So this is a, a top-level fight. And uh, I'm thrilled that it's happening. And as I said, it's probably the best fight or one of the top one or two best fights that was on the calendar for the fourth quarter. All right. So before we go on the record, we saw a couple of different people saying they like Zerto maybe in the upset. That's some of the topic right now in the live chat. Get in there in the live chat. How about this question right here off the BFW Twitter handle uh, and uh, and YouTube handle? Do you think there may be some fireworks at the beginning of this one? You haven't gone on the record yet with a pick. <laughs> Or might these guys feel each other out a little bit in this showdown at 175? Well, I mean, these are seasoned veteran professionals. Dimitri Bivol is a very skillful fighter, uh, a good technical fighter, not the kind of guy that just goes all out at any point in the fight. He's a very measured fighter. He can get you out of there if you give him an opening for sure. But he's not ever been the kind of fighter that just goes, you know, uh, 100 miles an hour and, and, and doesn't try to make it like the first round of Hagler and Hearns. And while Ramirez has sometimes uh, gone after guys. Uh, I think he knows that he's in with a different level of fighter compared to, I mean, again, he's fought good fighters, but Bebo's on another level. So I think they'll definitely be uh, somewhat cautious in the early going, I would think, um, given that they both know what's at stake. And I think they respect the abilities and the talents of the other guys. So if this fight's going to turn into something exciting, I think it's going to be uh, what I find to be the, the, one of the best parts of boxing is, you know, you all like to see guys go out there and like, again, Hagler Hearns and just go, you know, from the jump and just go to just tear each other up. But I also like to see a, a fight where, you know, you're you're seeing quality and watch the slow build starts out. They get into it and then it slowly builds into a bonfire. Uh, I don't know if this is going to reach bonfire level. Uh, I just know that I like seeing the best against the best. And this is the best against the best. Yeah, there is no doubt uh, that this is the mandatory challenger here. And there's got a, it's a lot of back and forth about whether or not Zerto has a great chance to pull the upset. Of course, Bivol may be in position, the Russian, to fight Canelo Alvarez again, as you alluded to. So let's just see uh, how this all lays out coming up here uh, for this battle. Let's go on the record. What do we think here? What do we think happens? And maybe even get a little more specific on when it might happen. Dan, you go on the record first. Sure. I mean, I love the fight, as I've said. 
uh, I have massive respect for both guys, but I think that Bivol skill wise is just a little bit better, maybe a lot better, frankly, than uh, what Zerto brings to the table. Uh, Zerto is a southpaw that might be slightly problematic for Bivol, but I don't think enough where it's going to cause too much trouble. He's a, as I said, a veteran professional, good amateur career, undefeated. I've been fighting all over the all over the place, whether it's uh, in the United States now in the Middle East, not a problem in terms of being on equal footing because one guy is from Mexico, one guy is from Russia. Uh, I like the skills of Bivol better. I think that this is going to be a good fight. I think it, it will be in spots exciting. I think there might be a good competition at times, but I think when it's all said and done, uh, Dimitri Bivol wins this fight by a decision. Um, I see a fight that's going to probably be somewhere in that eight to four range where, you know, Zerto certainly uh, is there and it's not like he's completely overrun, but that, that as I've said before, TJ, who am I going to quote? The great philosopher Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> skills pay the bills. And, uh, and uh, Bivol is the more skillful fighter. I think he also has a good chin. And I think that's the reason why I'm picking uh, Bivol to win this fight by decision. And by the way, you see one of the peeps saying, I got $1,000 agreeing with you on Bivol by decision. We, we always say gamble responsibly here on the show. I don't know if you need to be betting that much on the show. Whatever you feel comfortable with, bet within your means. Um, it is interesting. It was a distance fight. Uh, for him, obviously, against Canelo. I like the B-Bowl punching power. I don't know that Zerto Ramirez has been in with a guy this big that can punch like this. Yes, he's knocked out other light heavyweights. I, there's not a lot of value on B-Bowl on the money line, and mm-hmm. I'm not so much interested on when this fight, W-H-E-N, when it ends. I'm just interested in Bivol getting a knockout, and I think he will get a knockout or a stoppage at some point, maybe even late. So you're going to go on the record decision. I'm going to go on the record a little more value, plus 400 on the Bivol KO. I mean, so that tells you BetUS with that line is trying to entice you there a little bit. And again, by extension, we talk about this all the time if you're new on the show, if Dan is taking the decision, then by obvious connection he's taking the over as well might as well load up on the over even though the over is minus 450 here for the 10 and a half rounds there's a couple people asking about the draw prop and they really like the possibility of the draw the draw is plus 1600 right now on the best bet us line if this thing ends up you know six six over 12 rounds 114 114 or whatever however you get to the math on the draw Listen, I'm not draw, saying put a lot on the draw, but what's your thought, yeah, Dan, on that? I'm like, listen, the, the draw props are always enticing and because it, they're not that common. The, you know, And there have been a few times, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I know there's been a couple of times. I said one on the show a few weeks ago, I forget what fight we were talking about, where while I made the a pick of one or the other guy in the match, I believe I said something to the effect of, you know, if there's ever going to be like the kind of fight that feels like draw-ish, uh, this could be that fight. I'll tell you what it was. You were on the money with the Pedraza Comey fight exactly. this summer. That's you correct. said on the record, this is a close decision, and do not be surprised if it ends up a ten round draw. So correct. you were and on it. Wasn't, it. And That's it wasn't. The one you so, all that said, I mean, I don't think, except in like, you know, I've been making picks on fights for like you know over twenty years, doing uh, you know, pretty much all the big fights that you can think of. In that entirety of the time I've done it, man, I might have picked the draw like twice maybe once i mean just not a comment <laughs> but again if you're wagering it's one thing to write your pick because it's going in the newspaper or it's going on a website or something like that right but if you're actually putting money down and you get 16 you know uh what do you say plus 1600 on a draw yes and you're betting other fights and it's in your portfolio of bets you know what would, would i throw you know 25 bucks down or whatever or 50 bucks down on a draw just for fun and in and, and the scheme of the rest of my wagering on a fight like this, not the craziest thing I ever heard of. I, you know, it's uh, it, it's enticing. And by the As way, somebody else they, put it. That's why they put, put some that pizza number. money on it. Yeah, put some pizza money on it, and then you can yeah. maybe go buy a pizza franchise if it comes through. <laughs> but uh, you know, bear bear in mind here that uh, these are these are uh, very experienced fighters. Questionable things can happen with cards. It's over in the Middle East. We should point out just one more time before we move off this fight. Both of these guys, Bivol the Russian, usually trains in the United States. He mm-hmm. went there way early, at least a month. Zerto Ramirez, obviously in Mexico and in Southern California training, he went there a month early, like at the beginning of October or late September. Yeah. These guys have been there for about a month. So getting acclimated and all that, that's not that big a deal, right, Dan? No, not at all. I mean, they're used to the time zone. They're used to the, the you know, the climate, all that kind of business. Uh, this fight will take place in the evening time. It's not like they're fighting at some obscure time that their bodies wouldn't be adjusted to. Uh, for us here in the United States, uh, the, the zone uh, of the, I believe it starts at 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon Eastern time. 
Uh, but for them over in in in, uh, in, du in Dubai uh, in the UAE in Abu Dhabi, as you said, they have been there for quite a while. So there is no excuses in terms of being adjusted. This is not uh, Lennox Lewis going to South Africa on like uh, a week's notice and fighting at six thousand feet altitude against Hasim Rockman and being upset. These guys have been there preparing. And by the way, these are these are guys. These two guys are total pros. These are not fighters that you ever hear about not coming and making the weight or not being prepared for the fighter, being disrespectful towards their opponents. These guys are true professionals. They they take it seriously. They know what's at stake. Uh, I believe they respect each other. These are not guys that trash talk the opponent. So there might be, uh, in this particular approach, not as much heat as there might be in terms of other ones where guys are going back and forth. But don't make a mistake. This is a good matchup. All right. We're uh, anxious to see what happens. Dan and I both agreeing on who will win, Bevol, the how Bevol wins is where we disagree. And I'm sure I'll get a text at some point Saturday evening, told you two words from Rayfield, and I'll know what so, that means. TJ, I respect the picks. I just don't I don't see what's in the uh, Bevol arsenal that he's scoring big knockouts against top quality opponents. You know, he's All a right. great boxer, but he's never been the big knockout guy. And uh, Zerto Ramirez has never shown real issues in terms of the chin and uh, the southpaw stance and both the experience. Of, so, you know, listen, knockouts happen. Anything can go down in a boxing match when they ring the bell. But um, my perspective was that if you're going to pick an outcome, it, it lent itself more to, put it like this, it lent itself more to either Bevo by decision, and I would think that there'd be a better chance for Zerto to get the knockout than there would be for Bevo to get the knockout. Interesting. That's With his punch, and he's, he's shown punching power at light heavyweight. He has scored three knock, uh, knockouts at light heavyweight already since moving up. And so here's, he's the, here's an punch. example, by the way. Will, so, it, will it translate? Yeah, I mean, he, he absolutely obliterated – uh, Sullivan Barrera in four rounds. And Sullivan Barrera has been a good contender for a long time. He's fought a lot of top guys. But he also challenged Bevel for the title a few years ago. And he went into the 12th round with Bevel. And so when you see Zerto just run him over, and you see, not that not that Bevel struggled with him, he won the fight handily, but it took him 11 rounds to get him out of there. Uh, those are all things that you put into the pot when sure. you mix up the stew and deciding on the pick. And uh, I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all of what makes the decision for you, but it's one of the pieces of data that you can use as you make the pick. And so um, if he gets the knockout, good on you. I like my chances.